right, welcome everybody to another episode of Big Sky Hobby Corner. Here it is, Christmas Eve. And uh, we're going to start uh, building our Valiant 30cc aircraft. Um, as you probably watched in the unboxing video, we got some wrinkles we need to get rid of. So what we're going to do, we're going to work through those as we work through the airplane itself. Um, that way, because I'm kind of limited on space and I can't really drag it all out at the same time, take care of the wrinkles and then build the airplane. So we're just going to work through the wrinkles as we go along. Um, in the instructions, we're going to start with the uh, flap hinge and flap installation. Uh, we're actually going to use hinge points on that, which are for by the directions, that's what we have to do. But we have to uh, modify our hinges that it came with a little bit. We have to trim them down to one inch from the center point or the hinge point to the end of the hinge. So uh, let me reset the camera and we'll be right back. Okay, here we are. We have our wing panel out. Uh, we'll blow the wrinkles out here in a minute, but we have some uh, modifications to do. And this isn't my modifications. This is actually in the instruction manual. Um, pretty healthy, informative instruction manual, but <laughs> kind of uh, reminds me of Ikea with all the special symbols. <laughs> <laughs> no offense, no offense, I just thought it was kind of funny. But if you'll notice right here in the instructions, it shows our hinge, our hinge point that it came with. And on one side, what we need to do is measure from the hinge point out, mark it at one inch, and then cut it off at that point. So, and we need to do that to eight of them. So let's go ahead and dig those out and uh, make that happen. And what we'll do, we'll just take our side cutters and we got a ruler and a marker. Use my wife's kitchen shears to open the bag. All right, we'll just go ahead and get rid of all of that right there. So we're gonna need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we need to do it to all of them. And these are our hinges that it came with. Um, I'm gonna assemble this with these hinges. I know the air airplane this big, I would rather go with hinge points myself, but um, I've watched videos of this airplane flying with these hinges, so we're gonna do that. I'm also gonna put some blender in to help seal the gap as well um, to, to help that. So we'll just see what happens, see how long it lasts. Okay, I'm gonna show you how to do this on one and then I'll do the rest off the camera. So what I wanna do, you can see our pen and our hinge. And what I wanna do is line my ruler up exactly with the center of that. So just like that, I can get my Sharpie marker. And very carefully, I'm gonna make a mark at one inch right there, okay? Just like that, all right? And then I'm gonna take my side cutters and just look at right and just clip that off of there just like that and then we uh, have our modified hinge point all right well I'm gonna cut the camera and I'm gonna do the rest of these and we'll be right back and moving on with the next step after I get that done okay I'm gonna show you a little quick trick right here I just thought of we can do this grab your next hinge point line up your pins okay center to center Just like that. Then take your side cutters and go right there to it. And then boom, you have an inch. So that's what I'm gonna do to all these instead of having to measure and mark each one. It's just kind of a quick way to do that. Okay, some of you may not ever see this, but I've got a little helper here and his name is Ryan. Say hi, Ryan. Hi. And uh, he thinks he's big and bad enough to cut these hinges. So Ryan, you wanna, nope, flip them over. Remember we got a butt up against there. All right, close down on it. You gotta stay on our mark. Okay, now squish. <laughs> oh, come on, Nancy. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> uh, I'm helping. Uh, uh. <laughs> no, don't twist like that, bud. <laughs> you want me to do it for you, bud? <laughs> <laughs> I almost got now, it. Now, see, I don't know what the problem is. Look, right off. Okay, I'm gonna try it again. I'm gonna try it again. Okay. I, you did it with the tip instead of the back. Here, let me see. Yep. All right, just like that right there, okay? All right, 
Come on, Cupcake. You got it. Go, go, <laughs> go. That is nickname. Go, go. You're come on, Pumpkin. <laughs> oh, come on, Sugar Cup. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. We're going to tear some stuff up here. <laughs> here, let, let, let me let Daddy handle this, okay? Watch out. I don't want you to get hit in the eye. Jeez, how do you do that? Huh? It's like... <laughs> Mm. Those hands are like a vice, buddy. Can I try those scissors? No, you'll tear up <laughs> my scissors, son. Yeah, it's like that. Okay. Okay. Now uh, we have our flap and our aileron out of the bag. Um, now you do have to pay attention because there is a left and a right side. Now what we need to do is trial fit everything and get everything lined up and make sure it's all good to go before we apply a drop of glue or epoxy absolutely anywhere because we don't want to epoxy something into place and say, oh crap, our, our flap is a half inch too far over and it's actually too late then because uh, then you would have to modify your aileron and all that good stuff. We don't want to have to do that. So we're going to trial fit everything. We're going to grab four of the hinges that we shortened. Okay. Put them off to the other side. The other ones. And what we need to do, our shortened end, that's going to be easy to tell because it's going to be blunt on the end we cut and it's going to be pointed on the other end. Now we shortened these hinges so they'll fit in the flat with no interference. So let's go ahead and slide them boogers in there. Got my YouTube appropriate music going in the background there. It sucks because I can't play my regular music. All right, just like that, okay? Let's see if I can get you guys a little bit better. View of everything that's going on here. Whoa, hey, you're looking at my wall. Tell you what, this mount I have is not the best in the world. You know what, I got it. All right, well, on. that's a little better. Not perfect. Okay, we have our hinges installed in our flat. Now, one thing we want to make sure we're doing is our hinges are going this way and not this way. Okay, make sure they're moving lateral with the, the flat. And then just one at a time, go down the line and slide them in these pre-drilled holes. I noticed that uh, these buggers are a little looser than what I drill them out for, but that's, I mean, that's fine. We're gonna fill the hole with epoxy anyway. But one thing we need to pay attention to, not only where we are on the side of our wing, but if you look, let's see if I can get that in there. See this control horn right in here. That needs to line up with a hole in the back side of the wing for operation, okay? So we're gonna get that in there, okay? And then next we're gonna go ahead and prep our wing for the uh, CA hinges. So let me get tooled up and we'll okay. pick up on that. Okay, now we're ready to prepare our wing and aileron for the uh, hinge installation. Now remember, we're trial fitting everything. So what we need to do, we can see our hinge slot right here. I'm gonna take 1 16th drill bit and right smack in the middle, and just eyeball, we're gonna drill a hole. All the way through. I think that's actually for adoration for the glue. Do that to all four hinges or hinge places. Okay, and we need to do the same to our aileron. I took the flap out so it's a little easier to maneuver all this. And again, in our hinge slots, we want to uh, drill the hole right in the middle.
can't find my charger for my Dewalt, so I have to use the uh, Nikita. All right, just like that. It should line up pretty good. All right. Get that out of the way. Always put your toys up when you're done. Makes life a little easier. Okay, back to the workbench. Okay, man, this thing is huge. It, I mean, it chews up. I'm on an eight foot table. And I mean, it chews up every inch of workspace that I have. I hardly have room for my laptop over on the other end. It's doing all the recording right now. All right. We're gonna get four hinges. Two, three, four. We're gonna get four T-pins. Three, and four. Consult our instructions. I'll show right here. Place T pins in the center of each hinge for the aileron. I don't know if you want to see it, but if you're building one following along, there's our hinge and there's our T pin offset of that slot. So that's what we're going to do to all four of these. Just had that done. And what that is, that helps you. I mean, there's no structural significance to placing a T pin in your hinge. But what that does. That keeps you from sliding. <laughs> <coughs> Sorry, folks. I, I got sick a couple months ago, and it seems like I just can't shake this cough. But uh, we have our hinge here. We place our T pin in the middle of it. And what that does, that keeps us from uh, over in installing the hinge, getting more in the wing or more in the aileron than what we need. We place it in the middle, and that just keeps it even. So we'll just eyeball it, you know. I got some rather large T-pins because I like to have something I can get a hold of. Yeah, you know, about like that there. I won't get you getting too much of the wing there. Stare at my big old fat belly. We're gonna do that to all four hinges. And what I'm doing, I'm just kind of eyeballing the center of that radius, that half circle there, about the center of that, about halfway over. About like that. A, okay, it looks like a big old wad of glue. On, so you don't really want a big wad of glue on your T pin when you poke through there because that's going to make your hole bigger than it needs to be. Just like that. So I guess maybe CA hinge technology has changed a lot over the last 20 years. I don't know. We're going to find out. Okay, we have that done. Now. Slide the hinges into position with the T-pin resting against the edge of the control surface. The control surface is our aileron. So we're going to take that. We're going to slide our CA hinge. And what I'm going to do, that little hole we drilled, I'm going to line that up in the center of that slot. Okay. There. And if you're wondering, I'm not blowing the wrinkles out yet, just in case we wrinkle it some more during um, assembly, 
We'll take care of those two, that way we don't have to blow it out twice. So, there's that one. My daughter, she just likes to see her fingers or whatever on camera. <laughs> Don't you, Nick? Okay. And we did that. Now, fit the aileron to the wing panel and remove the T-pins from the hinges. The gap between the aileron and wing must be as close as possible. And the reason we have to close that gap as much as possible, we don't want to disrupt an airflow going from under or over the wing and in between the aileron that causes flutter. And when you have flutter, you have vibration. When you have vibration, things shake loose. And you don't want that to happen, especially since you have CA hinges. So I'm going to go through and make sure my hinges are straight up. Oh, your hair is beautiful, sweetie. It's like so. My daughter decided she wanted to be a blonde. So her and her mom were dying hair a while ago. And... Now, we will slide this bad boy together. And the way I always have done this is just start at one end, work your way down, sliding our hinges and things together. gentle have some patience slight pressure don't get crazy with it what do we have going on here Sometimes it helps if you stand it up like this. All right, we're pretty much there. It was just sliding out whenever I was pulling the other one away. Now remove our T-pins. And then I'm gonna stand it up again. And I'm gonna use go this way to kind of close that gap a little. All right, just like that, okay? And then what I like to do, I'm gonna get a little piece of tape. I'm gonna tape our aileron in a neutral position. Just for now, that helps keep everything in place while we're working with it here. Let's see, got the hinges installed. Our control surface is all the way against our wing, and that's what we want. We're taking the neutral position. All right. Well, again, I have our flat pulled out so we can work with it here, because it's the way everything fits on the flap. It's loose. It's flopping around and falling out. But I think our aileron is going to hinge. It's going to stay there. So I'm just putting the tape. To hold it there until we get her glued. And when we get her glued, we will. Uh... Oh, well, I'll be darned. Cool. So it says, it says pretty neat. Um, it says to uh, put uh, some tape on your ailerons to hold them in place. Okay, and then one thing we need to do is uh, out here on the end, 
right here we need to minimize this gap so the flap will fit properly so that's cool we kind of did that already all right now well we had to remove the flap anyway so that's cool grab our hinges and next we're going to put a little bit of oil on our hinge that way it will uh hinge properly Here's what we're going to do to make this process a little easier, less messy. I'm going to get one of my mixing cups I use for epoxy. I'm going to squirt some WD-40 in there. That's way more than we need because if you just held your hinge out here and just squirted it, you'd have oil all over it and that creates another problem. Your epoxy would never stick to it. So I'm going to take my hinge like so you can get a t-pin you can use a toothpick if you want to and use that to just kind of transfer some oil over keeps you from making a big old mess that way work it back and forth and get that oil in there you know what that t-pin's not really transferring much oil i need a q-tip i may have to run upstairs we would use a brush, but a brush is actually too massive. Um, you'd get oil in places you wouldn't want to. So let me go grab a Q-tip. Okay, oh, I'm back. Um, Ram has got a Q-tip. I'm gonna dip our Q-tip in the oil. Let's see, you guys are in Get oil in our Q-tip and that cotton really absorbs that oil. Loads a bunch of it up for you. And I'm just gonna kind of press that on the hinge point right there in the pin. Get that oil in there real good. Kind of work it back and forth. Slick it up real good and get that oil band inside there so it can work. We'll do that to all of them. Believe it or not, you can actually feel a difference in those when you do that. And I mean, fully extend them every which way. And you notice I got my bench covered with paper towel so it helps absorb any kind of excess anything. And that's kind of what it's doing over here. You can see. Any excess oil, see that spot, is coming out. And that's just pulling off the excess. You only want enough in there to work so it don't interfere with the gluing. Just like that. Okay. All right. Now, uh, we're gonna let that work for a minute. I'm gonna go to the bathroom and uh, be right back. Okay, really important side note here. Um, when you start flying airplanes that are this expensive, you have to save money everywhere you can. And uh, this is one thing I do. Um, you like a little something to snack on while you're building. Me personally, I do too. You go down to your local uh, department store and buy a box of small bags of chips or so. It equates out to about 80 cents a bag. Well, um, at that same department store, run down the aisle there where they keep all the potted meat and stuff and Vienna sausages, you'll also find ramen noodles. I already lived on these in college. So uh, here's a handy little tip. You like a little something crunchy to snack on. You don't have to always cook these things to eat them. They're terrible for your health anyway and they taste bad, but it works. So this is what I do. Get you uh, chicken or beef, because that's all I have. Well, there's shrimp available as well. You can do this with shrimp too. Get your bag of top ramen. Okay, don't open. Go around, just kind of squish it up.
I taught my kids this, they love it. Okay. When you cut the top off, make sure your line is as straight as it can be, okay? We have the best part. This is where all the magic is. Um, want to do this, and we want to cut our line to match our top ramen bag, just like that. It has to match perfectly. Okay, we're gonna open our seasoning, just like that. Okay, we're going to take this, we're going to take this, and we're going to turn this down on top of that, just like so, and make sure every bit of that gets in there, okay? And we're going to tap our bag like this, and what this does, that gets that flavor all around those uh, wax noodles, okay? I don't know what it is. I think it's actually old shoestrings or whatever, but hey, who cares? Good stuff right there. Okay, let's do some actual work here and get some stuff glued together. I'm mixing up some epoxy here. I'm using a 15 drop ratio. We're gonna glue our flap in first. So you want some paper towels ready. Got your hinges oil. I'm using a Q-tip, and what I did, I peeled most of the fuzz off the end of the Q-tip so I can get down inside those holes where we're going to install our hinge points. So, what I'll do here... Got epoxy on there. But I'm just going to... Like cleaning out your ears... I'm gonna, Smear epoxy down inside there. Just like that. I'm going to get those on the wing first. It don't matter which one you actually do it to first, just as long as all of them get glue. hinge to get glue on it. We're going to put glue on them as well. You may not be able to see this part as well. i got to hold it. I'm just using the same method of getting glue on the Q-tip. And uh, sliding it in the hole. Just like so. And then what we're going to do, we're going to glue our hinge and put those into the flat. You're going to have a little bit of excess glue squirt out, which is fine, as long as you catch it before it sets, you'll be okay. And you a little epoxy. I remember, short side. Putting it in the hint in the, the flap, making sure I have the right orientation. Kind of wiping off the excess as I'm going here. We'll clean it up with paper towel when we uh move on here. Now I'm using 30 minute epoxy. I wouldn't use no 5 minute uh, for a couple reasons. I mean, it gives you plenty of time to work and it also gives it plenty of time to uh, soak into the wood as well which is what you want. You want good adhesion. Just like that. 
Okay. Now we're gonna put epoxy on these. Okay, and then we're just gonna slide them into our holes, make sure you've epoxied them, which those were the first ones we did. If you don't have it straight, they won't go. Now what I'm going to do, because what's wanting to happen is gravity is wanting to take over and our, our flap is wanting to fall off. So we're going to get a few pieces of tape here. I'm going to line our flap up. With the bottom. Making sure that straight is very important. Gravity can work against you. <laughs> okay, here we are. We have, what I did, I stopped and I let our epoxy set up for our flap because it was, gravity really wanted to help and uh, move it offline. So um, what I did, I stood the wing vertical, taped everything into place, and just stopped. That way, everything would stay where it needed to stay. So there's our hinge flap, and now you can see you got all kinds of movement. Um, now remember the rule of thumb in aviation: anytime you use your flaps, anything more than 20 degrees is actually just induced drag. It's not actually helping lift anything. But we definitely have that full range of motion. Now. Uh, what it says to do in the instructions is to put a few drops of CA in the openings of the uh, hinge points. Now, that's pretty well full of epoxy, so I don't have any room to uh, put any kind of CA, so we're going to move on to uh, hinging the ailerons, which we've already got them set. So we'll just move, slide on down the workbench here. What we're going to do is uh, go ahead and glue our hinges. We're going to use our fast CA and go ahead and uh, remove this tape that we've put in the place to kind of help hold it in place for spacing. I'm just Taking the tape off both sides, guys. You're not messing up an important. All right. Now, one thing I want to check in our placement is that we have a full range of motion before getting carried away. So that looks really good. I'm going to take our CA. And I'm going to push. Make sure our aileron is all the way up. And I'm going to apply CA. Several drops of CA on our hinge. What's going on here? Yeah, we're plugged. <laughs> Always make sure you're opened. So, I'm just going to take a T-pin. Oh, crap. That hurt. Be careful. Yeah, 
Yep. Okay. Just like that. All right, now we're open. Now we can do some stuff. sure I'm getting plenty in there to wick on up in there. These kids are upstairs playing. Sounds like there's a herd of elephants up there. And get each hinge location. Video. Yes, we're videoing right now, buddy. Oh, sorry. <laughs> you're okay. What? Oh, your puppy? Yeah. Okay, that's the underside. We're going to flip it over and get the other side. Ryan? Hey, bud. Not right now, okay? Okay. Chain sides again. Now what I did, I put basically five drops on each hand, and you saw me bouncing back and forth, and that was to get both sides of that slot, okay, because those are slotted hinges. And one thing you do, when you have this, after you get done gluing, give her a couple squishes, blow the CA that remains in there out, so we can try to make as much use of this uh, applicator tip as we can. All right. There's that. Okay, we are hinged. I'm going to give this a few seconds to dry. And uh, what I want to do on our aileron, I'm going to apply some blender. If I can find the right size. Okay. This is blender. And what you do with this. You can actually use it as hinging material on your small foam airplanes. It's manufactured by 3M. It's actually a medical product. <coughs> and, uh, but what we do with this, we take this and we cut off a length. We fold it in half and stick it down inside and then apply it down to it. So we can go ahead and do that. Drink a coffee here. Oh boy. Get that camera world stay. Alright. I 
I'm just gonna lightly put this on here like that so I can establish the lean. About like that. Very carefully, I'm gonna stick it on my chair. And then we'll cut it. And then what we wanna do, we wanna extend our other one all the way. Just like when we're gluing that down. Now, see if I can do this. This is pretty tricky. Fold it. And then we fold it. Like so. You want to pinch it together there in the middle for me, sweet? down inside. Okay. okay. Well, that didn't go as planned. Is that fresh? Yep, that is fresh. Huh? You have more? Yeah. Where? Right here. Mmm, let's put that stuff in. sticky. Yeah, it's really sticky. Now, before we do that, go ahead and give her later on a tug. Make sure you got her glued in good. Tell you what, let's try something different here. Instead of trying to do the whole length, let's do sections. So, How did you get this done so fast? Well, it's an RF. ARF. You want to push that inner on down for me then? Okay. You're supposed to be able to fold this stuff in half, sticky side out, like that. Like so. looks like crap. I'm having a hard time with this. So you know what? I'll tell you what. I'll figure out how to do this properly and we'll come back and do all this uh, later. Together. Yeah, together. I'll have to research a little more how to do that. <laughs> but normally, sometimes what you can do, another thing you can do is get you a strip of covering, put it down inside there, and then iron it in there. That's the typical way to do it. I was trying to use this blender that was supplied by 3M. But uh, anyhow, that's uh, that's our aileron and that's our flat. And I want to go ahead and at this point, since this is most of the construction, go ahead and blow out some of these wrinkles. So I got my...
kind of going along and chasing the wrinkles out. Much, much better. Okay, now you probably wonder why, why it's a brand new airplane. Why is it all wrinkled up? Well, you know, to be honest with you, I'm willing to bet money that when this thing come off of the airplane value factory, that it was nice and tight and looked real good. But you understand these things are built, they're packaged, they're boxed up, put on a shipping container, ride a boat over here, and. Uh, they get over here on the loading docks, they get shipped to a warehouse, and they sit in that warehouse until uh, they're sold. Now, there's temperature changes, winter, summer, winter, summer, winter, summer, humidity changes up and down and left and right, and all these weather changes, as you know, you build an airplane, you let it set a couple summers or whatever, it wrinkles up. You occasionally have to tighten your covering up. Same thing here. You know, they're, they're not immune to temperature even sitting in a warehouse. So that's why they get wrinkled up. It's not the manufacturer's fault. It's just the, the nature of the hobby or the nature of the uh, material. Nothing to get discouraged about. tricky. It's easy to overheat those, so he's kind of speeding around that sucker. You can always come back, you know, do a little, go do something else, and come back, do a little. comes out and looks really, really nice. See, oh, got a little place there on the flap. <laughs> All right, Dan. Look pretty dang good. Yeah. All right. Now look 
it over again, make sure. All right, I'm gonna read a little bit in that there book it came with and uh, see what we're gonna do next. I'll be right back. All right, good morning, everybody. Um, here we are, first official day of my uh, winter vacation, as I like to call it. I take a week off every uh, winter for our company shutdown. Uh, really, what we do is we let uh, most of the management and um, all of the grow ground operators off uh, between Christmas and New Year's. And that's an opportunity for upper management and maintenance to go in there and go through the entire plant and make sure everything's good to go. You know, repair what needs to be repaired. Otherwise, we can't shut the machines down during operation or during plant operation. So we have a shutdown for that. Here we are on Monday. Uh, we're getting ready for our uh, servo installation on our right wing panel. Um, this is uh, where it can get kind of controversial between people. You know, in the book it says you got to buy these digital high speed metal gear some bitches that'll make your airplane roll at 580,000 degrees per second, whatever. You know, buy your servo to suit your taste, to suit your flying style. Me, I'm a Sunday flyer. I mean, I may toss them around a little, you know, have some fun with it, but for the most part, I kind of like just putting around the sky, just having a good time. Uh, me and one of my flying buddies, we may chase each other around the patch or whatever. You know, just general aviation fun. That's my style. Now, um, that allows me to kind of get away with some cheaper servos. Um, I hate using that word cheaper because these servos are actually really good. Uh, and they're very inexpensive. Now, let's say I went and bought the factory Futaba servos because I fly Futaba gear. Digital, metal gear, high torque, high speed servos. Those things are 80 bucks a piece. And for this airplane, I've got to have eight servos. That's a lot of money in servos. Um, what I do for me, um, I use a servo called Power HD. Um, there's absolutely nothing wrong with these servos. They are high torque metal gear servos, and you can go to aloftobbies.com. Yes, sweetie. Okay, you're just hanging out. Okay. Um, you can go to aloftobbies.com and buy these servos, and they're $12.90 a piece right here. Um, I use them in my big Avastar. I, matter of fact, those servos I pulled out of my decathlon I built a few years ago that I stacked out. It's in the Rebuild pile, or waiting someday when I don't have much going on. Yeah, it's just me and the kids today. God have mercy on their soul. Um, I'm going to show you what you get for $12.90. I mean, it's it's a decent box. They don't come in a Ziploc bag like some of your more cheaper servos would, like your Tower Pros or anything like this. But, I mean, you can feel that. It's, it's a good quality servo. I mean, they didn't really spare any expense in the development of this. One thing that's kind of neat is they're actually waterproof. Um, I watched a demonstration of a guy. He took one apart, I mean completely apart, stuck it in a glass of water and the thing still operated. Now I don't know what it did two days later, but it was running underwater. Also, I've seen a demonstration where a guy mounted one of these on the side of a table and he was lifting a 25 pound weight um, with one of these servos. Um, yeah, they're not lightning fast, but you know, for my flying style, that's just fine. I'm not lightning fast either, so we get along really, really good, and especially for $12.90, um, it's well worth the money. And these are the servos I'm going to use in this airplane as well. Now, what I've already done, I make my own extensions. I go to, find where I store all of it here. I go to um, servosandstuff.com, the letter N in the middle. And you can buy the end pieces. I think you can buy enough stuff to make 10 male and 10 female for like five bucks each. That's all the, all the pens, all the cases, everything. And you can get you a handy dandy tool there for six bucks, the crimper, used to crimp all your ends. Maybe we'll do a separate video on how to make Insert your own servo ends, your own extensions, your own Y harnesses. Now, he does sell them on his website. They're not terribly expensive like, you know, anywhere else. I think you can get a, a Y harness for three bucks. 
I mean, it, it's not bad. Me, I, I like the challenge of doing these things on my own, make my own harnesses, my own extensions. And um, it, it, it's just something I like to do. You may not like to do that. You may not want to waste the time uh, to do so. I like it. But to each his own. Uh, but they have a lot of really neat stuff there. Um, worth going and checking out. That's servos and stuff, letter N, servos and stuff. Dot com. All kinds of neat doodads there. That's where I get my bolt meters. I put my airplanes. But uh, what I did, I got two servos and uh, got them ready. I made extensions for them the other day. And instead of pasting together, you know, two or three 24 inch extensions, I just make one solid extension that's going to go right to the pigtail I'm going to put in the fuselage. Now, again, that's my aileron. This is my flap. And you notice it's. A lot shorter because it don't have to go as far. So, that being said, I'm going to reset the camera and uh, let's uh, get some servos mounted. Okay, here we are. We're looking at our servo door here on the wing panel on the outside. One thing we have to do is go ahead and tape our aileron in the neutral position. So, as you can see right here, I just got a piece of tape there holding it neutral. And uh, what we need to do is take our felt tip pen and for orientation purposes, we need to go ahead and what I did, I put a mark here and a mark here. That way we know where everything needs to line up. And if you look, there are little indentations to where we're going to put our screws when we put this all back together. So what I did, I just put that dot on a screw hole. That way it would make sure that it would... Uh, Kind of be covered up a little bit. You can come back with a little bit of uh, acetone just a touch and clean that off. Okay, let's see here. Look at our book. That was important. I even highlighted it. Now we need to remove the uh, aileron servo cover from the wing and use a felt tip pen to mark the trailing edge on the inside of the cover. The servo output will face towards the trailing edge when installed. Okay, so if you want at this point you can remove the mark on the outside. So we'll go ahead and pull this. And one thing I'm going to do while we have this apart, I am going to kind of re-glue everything just for peace of mind. It's probably sturdy enough as it is. But let's go ahead and Lift that off of there. This is our string to uh, pull our servo wire. All right. Get our CA and just kind of add some glue and all the joints. Now, I'm just for, I'm doing this for a peace of mind. It probably would hold just fine. But uh, knowing I glued everything just makes me feel better. So if you want to, you can do the same. Just like that. Give that a second to dry. Then what I'm going to go, I'm going to go ahead and do, draw my arrow, like that. That way I know that's the trailing edge side. Okay. What's up, buddy? I put too much gum in my mouth. Oh my goodness. Too much gum in your mouth. What am I ever going to do with you, kid? Good <laughs> Lord. That's like a golf ball. <laughs> you want to see how much I have left? I don't know if I should. Do you have any left? Wow. <laughs> this kid. I'm going to show everybody. He got a roll of bubble tape in his stocking. I'm showing that golf ball you're chewing on. 
<laughs> Gotta love them. All right. Now, what I'm trying to figure out is my the orientation of everything. I got my servo, and this is the way we're gonna put this sucker in here, just like that. I'm gonna start. Just. No, I can't see. Let's put a wire through. And we're going to go just like that. I'm going to pop that off there. It should fit. This is all light plywood construction. Hey, looky there. No, you popped in all Just that. like that. Now this is going to go like this. We use and I'm going to... What, yeah, here in just a minute, buddy. But what I should have done was go ahead and pull my wire through that. And I didn't. So, let's try that again. Just dropped my gun. Yeah, I was like, what the heck is that? So. What in tarnation? They didn't give me enough hole there. I'll be darned. So I'm going to come back. I'm going to drill them out. I'm going to stop the video. I'm going to come back with probably like a 3 8 and drill that hole out. Because you can it? see as the problem. <laughs> they didn't make it big enough. So, okay. All right. Well, I'm going to drill that out and we'll be right back. Well, that was a failure. I uh, got a drill bit big enough to do that and uh, busted the wood around that. So, how to make that part easier, I guess. Are you recording? Yep. I want to show you something that with my drum. I can make it do a flip. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I want to show you that. So we'll set that back in here. We'll go ahead and mount our servo, and then we'll see about repairing that piece I broke. Let's see here. You broke the piece? Yep, yeah, right what? there, buddy. Um. Well, they already pre-drilled the holes for the servo mount. We'll see how well that works. So far, so good. So what I would recommend doing instead of using a drill bit to enlarge that hole, maybe like your Dremel tool with a small sanding drum. That was just too aggressive. Ryan's uncle, Uncle Jesse, who lives in Oregon, bought Ryan one of the little SEMA camera drones. It's lighter than two sticks of butter, so I'm not worried about it.
All right, those solos went in fairly good. Go ahead and install our control horn. And what we're going to do, my receiver should be here today. Um, before I really cinch this down good and call it good and start hooking up all the linkages and crap, we're going to power it on and get our servo returned to center before we actually button everything up for good. Yeah, I got uh, receiver and receiver pack and props and all that good stuff that should be here today. And see, that'll set in there just like that after we pull our wire. Let's see. There. And there's our piece that uh, flew away. A piece of it. If you can find all your parts. You can kind of piece it back together like a puzzle. I don't know where that other part flew off to. I'll set that just like that. I'm just going to re-glue it. about time to soak in acetone again. Oh, I like to take all my glue nozzles and soak them in acetone from time to time to keep them clean. I didn't do that on that last build. I had a whole bunch of them break on me. I wound up having to consolidate all my CA, so I got like a big old four ounce bottle of CA over there. Yeah, I think I'm gonna have to soak before I can do any more. Okay, here we are. I've got the servo screwed into the mount. Okay, like so. We have the trailing edge of the mount marked like so. Now what we need to do is pull our servo wire to the root of the wing. Now they have these strings in place. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna tie This string, and there's plenty there. Well, come on. I want to tie this string to our servo lead. If you can make things stay in place for you. You can tape it or however. We'll tape the one on the flap. That way you can see that way. Just like that. Get all that ready to go. Now if we'll look down here at the root. See our strings all bunched up right here ready for us to pull. Find out which one goes to that. Actually, it's just one string here. I'm sorry. We'll pull that loose. And then we'll start this, and I'll show you what we're going to do here. What I did, I stopped it at our flat bay. Okay? I've got plenty of wire available. So now, I'm just going to get a little piece of tape and tape our flap lead to that one. Actually, you know what? I can't do that yet. So, 
We'll mount our flap servo and then we'll do that. Actually, you know what? I'm sitting here. Yeah, let me go ahead and get my servo mounted in my Okay, I want to take a minute here and show you a pretty cool little trick. <clears throat> how to get your brass pieces into your servo. What I do, I can take my uh, center finder. I'll just put all four of them suckers on there. This makes this job really quick and simple. If you're like me, you got big hands, big fingers, and it's just kind of tough to get the little brass boogers in place from time to time. Until I have all four of them ready to go. I'll just take my servo and just give it a little push, just like that. Next one's ready. Just like that. Come on. Just like that. Boom. All installed, ready to go. Okay, I got my flap servo mounted. What we're going to do, we're just going to piggyback this bad boy. Piece of tape with our aileron. And then, let's see how I got that there. Now, see this slot? That's actually the slot both of our wires are going to come out of, but they have this notch here. We're going to slide that over there we have a bigger port to pull everything through and then we'll slide the wires over when we get them through there just like that book out of the way flap servo will actually be hidden just like that. We're going to come back and do some more work to that here in just a minute. But while I have everything there and I know what lead is what, we're going to go ahead and identify them. That way we don't get confused and plug our flap into our aileron and our aileron into our flap. So we'll just unravel them, and I know I got my flap servo lead to the back, so we'll peel that one out of there, just like that, get it sort of separated off. Now you can do this a number of different ways. You can actually buy little tabs with F and A and E and all that good stuff on them. Let's get a piece of tape. If you're looking for the item you just saw in the video, click here. Watch more videos by clicking here. Don't forget to share on social media and give a thumbs up. What's up, Butch? Make sure you forget to see this. Go like that right there and on that little flag. I'll just write an F for flap. I just wrote the whole word out there. Ain't no thing. Kind of clean that up there a little bit. Okay, now that we have both of our leads pulled and identified, we'll go ahead and slide them over into our notch. Just turn your servo wire sideways and slide them right through that little notch. Just like that. Nice, clean servo wire installation. Okay, what I'm gonna go ahead and do, I'm gonna go ahead and secure down our servo mounts or covers, whatever you wanna call them. And Horizon supplies these little servo type screws. Uh, there are 16 of them, that's eight per wing, four per hatch. 
So, and I already have a hole started for us. That's pretty handy. So I can go ahead and get all those put in. I'll tell you what, my shakes are bad today. Stress related, all that good stuff. What I'll do, I'll go ahead and get all four of them started. But next, after I do this, we will uh, do the linkage for our aileron. That's going to be pretty cool because I've never done this style before. Like on the 30cc Avastar, the servo was externally mounted, not internally like this. So, I mean, it's a nice clean mount. I like this. So, we'll see uh, how easy it's going to be with the rest of the world. So, like this is all on the flap. It's all internal. There's no external linkage. Or anything. Now this could be interesting when it comes time to set up. I may not have enough channels. channel receiver coming but you gotta remember one of those channels is for your battery. I'm gonna have eight servos. There we go. <coughs> now we'll do the same to the aileron. Now to save time on videoing, I'm just going to do this one wing on camera and I'll do the other wing off camera. It's just to save time on video because it's going to be the exact same process. No need to be redundant and show you twice. Because at the rate I'm getting to work on this, it may not be done till July. <laughs> Touch it at all yesterday, but of course it was Christmas. Woohoo! Then I 
I got to shut down tonight. About 3 34 o'clock. Got to go to town for a couple things. That's kind of the thing about here where we live in Montana. Going to town is kind of a big thing, especially in the winter. Because you don't want to get out no more than you have to. And then a run to town is 26 miles. So it's kind of a big deal in the winter. You gotta go in and get some supplies. Pick up a few things for the uh, for my build here. I gotta get some more of those three ounce bathroom cups I used for epoxy and all that good stuff. Use it to sort my bolts and stuff out too. Alright, just like that. I know I'm going to keep an eye on the mail today too. I'm expecting a few things for this build. You know, receiver, battery pack, switch harness, you know, all the essentials. But, uh, alright, that is having our hatch doors on. I'll reset the camera and I'm going to read ahead and see how we need to mount our linkage here. Okay, our first step in uh, our linkage is we got to mark where on the aileron to put our control horn. Now what we want to do, we want to transfer a mark from the center line, basically this radius, which is also in line with where our control arm is going to be. Boom, boom, and we just need to move that down there. Now what I'm doing, I'm using my rule, my ruler. I'm going up against my control horn, and then I'm sliding that to the center. Just like that. And then I'm going to use my my edge to make a mark right down here on the aileron. Just like that. See my black mark? Right there. Now we're going to get our control horn and stuff and get ready to do that. Alright. Now that we've established our mark, this is our control horn that's provided with the kit. Hangar 9 hardware. Pretty good stuff, actually. But you see our control horn and our back plate come together. So, I mean, you can use whichever method you want to separate the two. I'll just twist it off and kind of sand them off a little. Get my little sanding block here. and Just knock that off. All right, now what we're looking for, we want to center that up. And we're going to set her back about 332nd, 332 off of that, off of this line here. And here's why. We want this line of our control horns right here. This line of dots of our control horn need to be in line with our hinging surface, or right there in the crease. And that's about 332 back. And then what I'll do, I'll put that center of that horn, I'll just use that magic eyeball again. To get the center of our control horn. In line with that, get it straight. Just like that. And we got our three dots. We're going to drill our holes there <clears throat> to make that perfect. Okay, now we want to drill 1 16th holes in our marks. Now don't drill all the way through. We just want to drill about halfway or so.
Just like that. Drill bit back up. Oh, so that's how these things get lost. <coughs> okay, now it's time to do a little bit of backwoods tapping. Um, we're going to need some uh, thin CA, our fine applicator. We'll go ahead and grab our screws that we're going to use to attach the control horn to the aileron. And then what I'm going to do, I'm just going to run the screw in and out of all three holes. Trying to keep the screw as straight as possible. Just like that. Now what this is doing, this is actually putting threads in the block of wood that our control horn is going to mount to. And then we're going to put a few drops of CA in each hole and we're going to take a little break and we're going to let that CA dry and what that does it kind of plasticizes our threads and then when we go to put our control horn on it'll be a lot stronger thread in the end instead of using a back plate because that's actually a pretty thick aileron Today's secret letter is M. Not to forget about our PT40 giveaway at the end of the season. The letter M. M as in mother. Okay, now I'm just going to apply a few drops. In each hole. Just like that. Ain't no thing, see? All right, now we're going to take a little break. We're going to let that CA cure. It won't take but about 10 minutes. And uh, we'll come back and put our control okay. on. Okay, <clears throat> we're back. Our glue is pretty well dry. Now what I've done, I went on ahead and inserted our screws into our control horn because this as well has a 1 hole in it as well. And if you try to jive all that together at the same time, you're going to have problems. So what I do, I go ahead and run the screw in and give it a few turns past to kind of pull those threads a little bit. Now we got to do is set her up like so. What I'll do, I'll give her a couple, three turns on each screw. And just work it down like so. Sure, it takes a little bit of extra time, but... solid installation. Now 
Coming up next, we're going to have to do our linkage. I didn't really read too far ahead, but I think we're going to have, have a solder link on both ends, I think. I don't know. I'll have to check and see. Kids are upstairs raising hell like always. As long as nobody's bleeding or crying too bad, it'll be all right. And they don't destroy the house. And we'll just get her sucked down there. Use a even amount of pressure. Don't want to pull the threads out. Just like that. At this point, we can go ahead and pull our tape off. Sliding around on the bench here, kind of worked up on the wing. That piece of tape I put out on the aileron there. Hold it still while we work. Okay, now it's time to build some linkages. Um, on our wing, we're gonna have four linkages, two flat, two aileron. So what we need to do, they're all the same. You know, they use the three and three quarter inch push rod. They all use the same clevis and retainer nut. So we're just gonna go ahead and produce these and get these done. Now we have to have fuel tubing on here as a safety measure. So what I'm doing, I'm just gonna go ahead and slide fuel tubing, silicone fuel tubing, just the length up on the barrel None of this is solder like I thought, so that's kind of a good thing. We just want to make sure all our retainers stay tight. So we'll get all that. We'll slide this up over the clevis later. <laughs> I hear the oldest starting to yell. Now we're going to take our control rods and we're going to go ahead and put our retainer nuts on. May as well go ahead and get them all done, right? I'll just go ahead and put all them bad boys to the back. Add our clevis. Being careful not to cross thread. Because and that's easy to do because um, these are rolled threads, is what these are called. They're a good thread, but uh, they're just kind of cheesy on the way they go together sometimes. And the reason I'm gonna go ahead and just get all of them done now. So that when I need a three and three quarter push rod, it's already done. Now there are specific lengths that we're going to have to set. I think it's uh, four and eleven sixteenths to the uh, from end to end. Which, if we did everything right, that should pretty put us pretty close to trim.
<clears throat> well, I can't wait to the spring. My runway here at the house. We just pulled a fence up. And it looks like I can add another 300 foot onto the runway. Out there. That'd be good because now I can fly my big birds here at the house. Instead of having to go out to the field. See, these roll threads are always interesting. It's a different size nut there I grabbed. That's why that one's not starting. Glad I just didn't throw it away. Got the kids MP3 players for Christmas and man I'll tell you what it's like a drunk guy karaoke contest upstairs has been all day all right let's uh, see if we get the right size out yeah that looks much more gooder bored you to death I apologize I'll try harder next time wait a minute that's a Sullivan clevis how'd that happen Uh, he he. Hmm. That is interesting. There, much more gooder. That's interesting. Okay, let's look in our book right quick. Now we have a prescribed length we need to set these to. It's 4 and 11 sixteenths. That is like a sixteenth, a couple sixteenth, just a little bit off of five inches. So what I'll do, I'll uh, roll that back where we just have a few threads now on focus poking about an eighth inch through our clevis on one end and this is to kind of help set the length and I'm going to roll my jam nut up against it and then <laughs> well I can't find my other steel rolls so we'll just have to make do with this one well I'm going to shoot for right between five and six hundred thousand right there a bit more A lot more. 
We're going to see what we have going on here. It's got quite a bit of... Quite a bit of uh, control rod poking through there. So what I'm going to do... I'm going to split that in two. It's going to be right about where our barb is for our silicone tubing there. If you can see there, I really don't want to poke it out any more than that. Flip it over. Man, that's close. Four and eleven sixteenths right to that barb. Just like that. That's four and eleven sixteenths. You can fine tune it. We'll run our jam nuts up to it. Okay. We have our control rods made, and what I've done, I've connected it to our servo, to our servo arm, slid our silicone tubing up, and then what you want to do to kind of help life make it a little bit easier, take your drill bit and go through your control horns, or the holes in them. I put it out on the end hole on our servo, and I want to put it on the bottom hole of our uh, control horn, because I can program out my throw. Yeah, my daughter brought the drunk man karaoke down here. I told her not to be singing. And these things kind of can be a pain in the butt to spread open. Get her latched on like so. Now what we need to do is screw this out until we get it flush here. So, back off our tensioner nut, pull that out, and give her two rounds, maybe three, half, one, half, two. Unsatisfactory. I'm not really adjusting anything. I'm just kind of evening out our control rod here. Give us a little more throw because you can tell we're not quite there yet. Should be fairly close. Boom. All right. 
slide our silicone up there and boom we have an aileron linkage so that just cut our tubing right there that's interesting you know what I'll probably come back and just do that with wire <laughs> all right now we're going to get set up to do our flap okay real quick um we have our aileron set up and i did find an old receiver uh, that i'm going to use just for control surface setup purposes only um it's time to dial the flap in. Now this is this process is really going to take some time because this is the first time I've ever set one up like this. So what I'm going to do off camera, I'm going to do the initial setup and get things figured out. And I need to go top off my coffee too. And uh, once I get it all figured out, we'll come back and uh, I'll show you what I did in short. That way we don't take up an hour of what the hell am I doing on video, okay? So we'll be right back once I get it all lined out. Okay, here we are. Figured out what we gotta do on our flap. Now, mind you, I already finished the other wing and continued up to this point on the, other, on the second wing. What we do, we go ahead and center our servo with the arm in place. Then what we need to do, we need to take one side and always set it to your clevis recommended depth where your threads are poking through just a little bit and go ahead and lock that sucker in, which I've already done on this one. And then what we need to do is go ahead and apply our linkage to our servo. These metal clips are kind of hard to spread and get into place, but that's what you want because you don't want it coming apart. Now what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and install this and we want to get it through the hole and go ahead and secure it down into the wing. Now I've already got our wires pulled. Let's go ahead and get our flap up. Get that through there. Just like that. Okay. Yes, that's going to be kind of in the way. It's all good. And one thing I found that kind of helps is if we get our little drill, our center finder, and go ahead and poke these holes through the cover. Go ahead and get them enlarged. Just a little tip kind of make life just a little bit easier when it comes to that. Now don't drill through the mounting block. You want that to fit good and tight. Just through the cover. And once we get this done, all you have to do is adjust your clevis to get your uh, flap in the neutral position. Oh, whoops. Just as soon as I get this done, we'll start on, I think it's the tail wheel mount next those our wings are virtually done I'm gonna blow the wrinkles out of this one off camera of course oh crap you know what I think I forgot because I just looked up and saw this <clears throat> this would have been bad, bad, bad if this is really what's going on here. No, 
no. Huh. Thought I'd see an extra mount screw right there. flap on the other one, no biggie. I'll just have to put it in. You definitely don't want your servo horn to uh, come off. So the rest of our goodies should be here today. I don't know here in about an hour. Another thing I got to do this week is put together a 4-H aerospace course that we're going to start in May. If you know anybody willing to help, uh, probably use an assistant teacher. That'd be great. Let's be proficient in aerospace. this down until we get to where our flap will be almost all the way down. Now see I've got a computer radio a Futaba 14 SG we're going to program some of this. But, uh, yeah, we just, uh, let's see here. Okay, I'm going to cut the camera real quick. Because there's a few things I've got to do. I've got to go ahead and power my radio up and get this hooked into a channel so I can get that out to where I can work on it. Okay, now we're going to move on to the rudder preparation. Okay, we're going to need our rudder, of course, and we're going to need our tail wheel bracket. It already comes pre-assembled, okay? Remember I told you uh, a couple builds ago that when we get our hardware and it comes with Allen wrenches and we hang on to them for a reason, well, this is uh, just such a case. This is a situation where we can use one of those Allen wrenches just to make sure our wheel collars are tight on the wheel, Okay, as not everybody has these micro machine Allen wrenches. And then one thing we have to do right off the get go, we have the wheel collar. Hey, Casper decided he wanted to move my camera for me. Hey, guys, you hear that? It's quiet. Finally. Okay, well, we have to move the wheel collar down for our uh, placement of this. So we just loosen that off and we'll slide it all the way down and just kind of snug it up for right now, just for the time being. And uh, 
what we want to do, just kind of fill, trial fit everything. Um, I'm not seeing a hole. Okay, I don't know if they quit putting those in. Oh, it's there. It's there. It's just covered up. It just, uh, let's see here. See that hole there? It just uh, was covered up. So what we need to do is trial fit. We're just going to slide this bad boy in there. Like so. Just going to slide it. We may have to actually kind of notch that out a little bit to get a good snug fit. I want that to pop down inside that groove and it's not doing so. That's not a problem. We're going to get our X-Acto knife. And we're just going to kind of cut some of that corner out. You can actually come in there with a drill bit and run it sideways if you want. I want that down inside there. Really nice. It's not quite going yet. If you cut just a little too much out of that corner, that's just fine. We're going to fill that with epoxy anyway. There we go. That's what I want. I want that to go down inside that groove that's been cut. Get that in there. Okay. All right. Now, we got one thing to address here. See how nice and shiny that is? That'll never stick with epoxy. We're going to epoxy this in. So we're going to get some medium grit. I've got some uh, 220 that's just right handy here. We're going to use that. That's just fine. we got to give that epoxy something to stick to. So I'm just going to go around like that. And if you're wondering why am I going around instead of side to side like that, a couple reasons. It's actually pretty easy to do that. Whatever makes it simple on you. Okay, I'm going to get the whole thing. Now, if I went like that, that would, when our epoxy cures, we're actually pulling to get something, almost like threads on a screw. Now, if all of our lines were running down like that, our epoxy would hold it, but any kind of sudden jolt or anything like that, that would actually almost work against you. It would allow things to slip away from you. So if we just have a nice circle pattern around that that'll be that 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 will uh, reduce those chances of that happening so I'm just gonna go around all the way we'll mix up some epoxy I'm sure I have to thaw it out again like always I'll tell you what I gotta go to Walmart and get some more mixing cups Use a lot of toothpicks in this too, I've noticed. I don't have toothpicks, I got Q-tips. So we'll just use that. It'll smear epoxy just as good. Okay. Yep, I gotta thaw this out. And okay, we're it. back. I got my epoxy thawed out again. I start. You know, it's not like I keep my house freezing. I mean we're Probably right at 60. I'm hot natured anyway, so 60 degrees to me is actually pretty comfortable. Um, but the epoxy, what it does when it gets real cool like that, it uh, oh, coagulates. Is that the word for it? It kind of almost crystallizes. Um, it's not bad. Just to add a little heat like I showed in a video a long time ago. Add a little heat and it turns back to liquid. Everything works just fine.
Boy, the first year it did that, I was pissed. I thought, because I had a whole bunch of epoxy. I mean, I like to try to keep uh, five or six sets of epoxy on hand. Because it comes in handy, not even, I mean, just for just about anything. I use it on a lot of stuff other than airplane uses. I, heck, I even use it at work. But it uh, got kind of cool, and it wasn't bad, I thought. And I pulled out a set of epoxy, was going to use it, and that stuff was almost solid. I about flipped out, so I called my buddy who knows his stuff. He said, I just, uh, you can double boil it or hit it with your heat gun, and it'll work just fine. And sure enough, it took a little work, but uh, no epoxy wasted. And matter of fact, I'm still flying the airplane today that I uh, put together with some of that epoxy. So I know everything works real good. Okay, we're getting mixed up there. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and get it all inside our rudder real good. Get it down in that groove real nice. And force some of it down in that hole. Okay. I'm going to grab another Q-tip. These little uh, Sterilite organizers, I have like four or five drawers and wheels on them. So these are pretty handy. Uh, what I'm doing here, I'm getting a, a Q-tip, since I have a lot of those. And the stick is about the same diameter as the uh, wheel bracket. And I'm just uh, pulling the cotton off of it. I'm going to stick it down in that hole. Stick it in there. <laughs> and uh, I've got a warped sense of humor, so if you hear me giggle for no reason, it's not because I'm crazy. So I thought of something funny that was inappropriate and I probably shouldn't share. Make sure we get epoxy all over there. Okay, I'm going to set this aside, and now I'm going to coat our bracket as well. It's always a real good idea to put epoxy on both surfaces, metal or wood, and you know, you prep your surface, it'll stick just fine to metal. Okay, set that off to the side. Wipe that off around the wheel color. We don't want that getting stuck. This is actually where it's going to bolt to the fuselage. And I mean, there's enough there. We could break it loose if we needed to. But if we don't have to, better off we are. Install our bracket. Get that sucker down in there. Wipe off any excess. just to help secure it until, oh, I just noticed something. They even pre-marked our control horn holes over here for us. That's pretty cool of them. But we're gonna run two control horns because it's gonna be a pull-pull system. We're gonna use some really long screws that came in the control horn bag. So we get a piece of tape and we're gonna run across that and let that epoxy set. About 45 minutes, and then you can take it off. It's not going to go anywhere after 45 minutes. Just like that. And that is uh, prepping our rudder. That simple. All right, here we are. Our epoxy has set up. It's not cured yet, but it's able to work. Um, if you look... Kind of hard to see in the camera here. But you can see the three holes that came pre-drilled. Now when you get, look in the Monaco, you'll, it looks like just little pin pricks. So what I did, I just poked my hobby knife in there and just gave it a little twist to kind of open it up. And the wife's calling. Okay, I'm sorry about that. But anyway, as I was saying, you want to open those three holes up in the, at 
at, on the side that are exposed, you want to open them up a little bit with your hobby knife. Just stick them in there and give it a little twist. They'll open right up. But if you flip it over, you'll notice there's nothing there. So what I'm going to do to kind of help remedy that instead of just forcing a screw through there and hoping it comes out right, I'm going to take my center finder. This is a handy tool. I'm telling you. I mean, it's just handy, handy, handy. And just kind of give her a little twisty do through there till we come through the other side. There's just enough there. And that just open, make sure those holes are all the way through. This just prepares the rudder to install our control horns. And we're gonna do a double control horn on this because it's gonna be a pull-pull system. We're gonna have a cable pulling on both sides of the rudder. Now what you're gonna need in lieu of this, you're gonna need a control horn, three screws that came in the, in the hardware package, another control horn, and these three tiny nuts. Your tiny nuts are very useful. Okay, now we'll just kind of get that going. Firm, but gentle. We want to push that. Now, if it comes to a complete stop, we'll just use a screwdriver and just screw them on through. The reason that is is because that one went and was trying to bend our screw down. Work her on down. That one seems to be going pretty freely. This one's a little stubborn. This one will go down. Once we get them started, get them in there good to where we know they're not going to come out, we can kind of push our horn all the way down. That way everything's lined up. Just go ahead and run our screws all the way down. You want them coming through the other side. If they don't, we'll have a problem we're going to have to deal with. But I can feel that with my finger coming through on the other side. So we should be okay. And then we're going to take and tighten our tiny nuts. <laughs> Sorry. I forgot what movie that was on, but I remember hearing that, and it just cracks me up. Your tiny nuts. Let me see your tiny nuts. It was actually a snack they were talking about. <coughs> that back one may need a little love. It looks like it's trying to go in crooked. Problem solving, guys, that's what a lot of it is. And if this were easy, Girl Scouts would be doing it. But sure enough, as I said that, we probably got a Girl Scout model builder out there that's ten times better than me. Of course. In my disclaimer, I said I'm not a professional builder. I just glue sticks together and they fly. Little bit of an issue here on this back one. Let's go ahead and remove it. I'll straighten that hole out a little. When we get this done, we're going to go ahead and hinge our elevator surfaces too, I believe. This is just getting that rudder ready to do. So I got a feeling we're going to start a fuselage here shortly after we get our elevator put together, I believe. Okay. Now, what we can do in this situation, let's make sure we don't lose our screw. We can go ahead and put our other control horn on the other side.
just like that. I'm gonna take my drill. Yeah, let's see, our hole was a little off. Now I'm just kind of holding this thing in my lap until I get a hole all the way through. I don't know if you can see that camera does its own focus thing. We got a hole all the way through. We will put that screw in. Yeah, Sarah hole was off about a 30 second, which was just enough to make it not want to line up for us. Now, if this continues, what I'll do, if you want to watch, hold on, I'm just holding it up here to where I can get a better grip on it. We're not putting unnecessary pressure on parts that don't need the pressure. I'm gonna go ahead and bring this bad boy down. These little things are really long, they're fine threaded. And they're just long winded. A little bit of patience and some good rest muscles help. It's out of alignment right at the moment. That's what we had to do to get uh, everything. I really just want to say out of alignment. See how we're a little high on this side in the front. We're almost flush back here. But we may have a... Each of these screws could be bent a 64th of an inch. And you add all that together over three screws, over the triangle that's given, it could make a lot of problems. And all it takes is a bent screw, a crooked hole, and nothing will work for you. So we're just going to kind of work around, get everything for the most part. It, this isn't bad. I've had some really, really bad ones. One of them, if I remember right, it was a long time ago. It was from a company called House of Balsa. It was, uh, yeah, it was not fun. <laughs> okay, now the fun part. I don't have a socket or anything this small. So, we're going to depend on a little bit of luck here. Get these darn things started. And then ultimately what we're going to do I'm going to give it a little crescent. I got a little six inch crescent we're going to put on this side and just use the screwdriver to tighten them up. This is where patience will come into play, especially for me. <coughs> just like that there. A little bit of patience, a little bit of ingenuity. Just like that. Now imagine if you're big time into electronics, you know, working on electronics, you might have a tool that small for that. 
what I'm gonna do, get my little six inch crescent in there. Get a hold of that. And use the screwdriver to tighten it up. And we don't want to suck that all the way into the wood. We just want to make sure we're good and tight. And we're going to put a drop or two of CA on there to hold that. Because vibration will loosen those bad boys off. And you really don't want that. sure we're parallel while I'm looking I'm looking down the rudder and yeah, it's kind of hard to get on the camera there but uh, I'm looking at our landings and making sure that they're parallel they're not you know crooked cockeyed or anything like that now what we need to do get our CA need to open up a little bit here it's sealed shut about due to for another soak I'm just going to put a drop at the top and let it run down. And if you want, you can hit it with a little bit of kicker because there's no wood for this to soak into. This is just acting like a thread locker. And come back a couple times throughout your flying season and make sure that uh, they're still there. Okay? Make sure that's good and tight. Paper towel and wipe some of that extra off there. If you're not used to messing with thread locker, it does have an odor and it does leave a oily film. It's not nothing horrible, just sawdust will stick to it and all that wonderful stuff and that is preparing our elevator we do we are wrinkled up a little bit and uh, i am going to blow those out but i'm going to wait till after we are done with all the fighting and all that good stuff all the construction of it yep just like i thought a little bit of epoxy got in to our mount. This is going to bolt to the airplane. And then when we're rudder steers, that's what's going to steer our tail wheel like that. But a little bit of acetone. I'm just sliding that all the way down. A little bit of acetone run through here. We'll clear that right up because there's nothing here or below that acetone will really eat right off the bat to uh, cause any damage. So, uh, that's our rudder preparation. I think next we're going to do our elevator. See, so we're going to need eight hinges. So, it'll be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's four per side. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and put my other hardware back up for the moment. That way it don't get lost or mixed up or one of the kids don't decide to come in here and say that'll work great and my uh, whatever. Yeah, I use mixing cups for uh, hardware sorting too. Okay. <clears throat> Alright, real quick I want to show you. This is our elevator. This thing is a beast. 
it's 37 inches from here to here so you're probably not going to be able to see me work on the whole thing at one time so we'll just do it a section at a time and again it's got a lot of wrinkles that need to be blown out and like i say we'll blow them out after we get all of our heavy construction done so got our hinges got our elevator what's bad is i got airplanes with wingspans that aren't that long isn't that funny Again, sealed for freshness. Pull our elevator halves out. Now the cool thing, we're gonna have run a left and a right servo on our elevator halves. And the cool thing about that is you'll have no rod to uh, connect the two to cause any issues. All right. Now we're going to need eight T-pins as well. Now I'll set these aside. <clears throat> now I got some smaller ones. Where'd they go? There's a lot of where'd they go when you're building an airplane because everything gets... Ah, there they are. Moved around and used and set down and forgotten about. So we're going to go ahead just like we did our ailerons. Install T-pins in the middle. Of all of our hinges. I'm just kind of glancing here. Yep, they even got our holes on the elevator too. I have not say, ever seen that done before. Pre-drilled holes for the uh, control horns. Dirt sure wasn't done on the aileron, I know that. Again, the reason we do this is so we don't wind up with more than half of the hinge. You know, we don't wind up just trying to hinge on a quarter of an inch of a hinge. That would make for a bad day. Just takes a little time, a little insurance poly policy, nothing wrong with that. All right. Now, let's go ahead and slide our hinges into our control surface, just like that. I'm kind of aiming for midway what's going on here well, it's kind of sloppy looking there must have got one they did on a Friday or something Friday 3 o'clock I'm out of here quitting time One you don't want to get is the one that a dude put together right before he quit. I think I've gotten a few of those at one time or another. Okay, there's that one. Don't spit on it though, that just causes more problems. <laughs> it 
sorry it's late and I've had the kids all day. They're finally gone. I'm just kind of got a case. Oh, man. <laughs> all right. Now, let's install our elevator halves. Now, if you notice, we've got a short end here and then a long end. This long end is going to be in the center of the old stabilizer there. Now we get these started, get them in, get them in your slots first. We'll worry about alignment here in just a minute. You know, main goal right now, just get them in there. Without wrinkling anything. Okay, you definitely don't want to fold your hinges. I think this one just comes with just enough hinges to do what you got to do. Okay, got her in there fairly flush. I'm going to pull those pins. We're going to get her tighter. But what you want to do on this end, you want to get your elevator flush with your stabilizer. Just like that. We'll go ahead and do both sides. Okay, just like that. Now we can go ahead and pull our T-pins and do some CA work. Make sure tip's good and clear and then we'll put a fine applicator on. Ow. Being careful not to jab a T-pin through your hand. Man, that's worse than being a diabetic. That stinks. <laughs> yeah, I did it. That's right. It'll quit bleeding. Long way from the heart. That's what my dad always said. Quit crying. Get off the ground. It's a long way from the heart. Okay. Okay. Just like we did on our aileron, we're going to Open her up, squeeze her in, and then open it up. About six drops or so. See me just raking that fine applicator across there because it's about one drop is all that sucker will put out. All the way across there. All right, move on to the other side. <clears throat> the reason I do this, I want to just make sure nothing moves on us. Making sure our alignment is good.
Now we know it's not going to move anywhere. Flip it over and do the same to the other side. I think I'm going to call it quits here after we do this for today. All right. Our elevator is hinged. Good to go. All right, we'll pick back up tomorrow and uh, see what else there is. This may be it for this episode. I think what we're going to do next, we're going to put our control horns on. And then uh, we'll call this a video. We'll call that a video. And then when we start our fuselage setup, that'll be actually a part three or a part two. All right, looking good, guys. Thanks for watching. All right, good morning, folks. Let's uh, finish up our elevator today. Um, what first thing I needed? Well, what I did off camera, I uh, blew some of the wrinkling out, make it a little easier to work with. Um, now what we got to do, we got to drill these holes out for our control horns on our elevator halves. Um, they already have them marked in three different spots. So what we want to do, we want to get a 564 drill bit. And then just drill those out. Try to keep it as straight as you can. So, that's why I thought they wanted us to do that. It goes through a hinge. Let's uh, get our control horn stuff out here. Go ahead and see, they, they come together like that. I just kind of twist them and pull them off and you can grab your X-Acto blade and shave that little tit off. Just like that. Get it out of the way. already been removed we just need a back plate okay now we have our screws now see when I went through this I was actually one screw short that's why I hang on to everything this is actually the one I'm going to use as a replacement is a Drew Dubro uh, style control horn screw it's just a touch bigger in diameter and a little short it's plenty long but for that one, we may wind up having to drill the uh, back plate out, but uh, that's okay. 
we will make it work. We're going to go ahead and put everything together and uh, make this sucker happen. Now the reason that one screw being a little short is going to work okay is because these are actually too long for this surface. We're going to come back with some side cutters and trim them off. Some holding this back there a little bit of. Uh... I'll show you how we do it on this one, and I'll do that other one off camera. Okay, now see we have our screws poking through right here. And then we'll get a back plate. Now, see, these will thread into the back plate. There are no threads currently in there. This thing is huge. So, we kind of got to make our own threads. And what I'll do. get one started helps if you get lined up on the hole I mean sometimes it has a little bit of a difficulty getting started because that's a square shoulder on that hole what you can do you can take your hobby knife and just poke it in that hole and give her a twist what that does, that makes a little bit of a chamfer to act as a lead-in. To get those things started. Sometimes they start and sometimes they don't. And when they don't want to start, just give them a little bit of a chamfer. It'll work just fine. Your wrist will get tired after you suck these down, I promise you. I think I might be able to create, for that oddball screw, I might be able to create enough of a, of a lead in to make that work. <laughs> Just like that, man. Perfect. Eyeball on the alignment here. If you don't drill your hole straight, that'll happen. They'll become a little bit out of alignment. I'm going to point at this. See, that just walked right off of there. that though kind of explain this lead in a little better it's like you're making a funnel for that screw to kind of line up on the hole with but you don't want to take a whole lot because when you do that you're taking away from the length that the bolt is biting onto
it. Now we just walk it down. We got all three of them started. In our next episode, I think, is when we're going to pull our fuselage out and get started on that. If you're in a big hurry, these things can be a pain in the butt, but if you just take your time, it'll go smooth as silk for you. There is one control horn in. I'll go ahead and shut the camera off so I don't bore you to death and go ahead and put this other one in. And I'll let you know how that okay. goes. Okay, we have both of our control horns installed. Now, the amount sticking up isn't just horrible, so I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just going to take a drop of glue and put it on the top of each one. And what that'll do, that will... Uh, Kind of helps secure it to the back plate. It'll act like a thread locker. And that glue will get in those threads. And uh, won't let them back out. It'll act as, you know, like a thread locker. And, uh, take a look in our book here. Alright, next episode we will uh, get this thing ready, our elevator and our rudder, put all this stuff together, and uh, get it ready for uh, mounting on the fuselage. So uh, we got our tail surfaces done, we got our wing panels done, everything's prepped and ready to start sliding assemblies together. And uh, thanks for watching, be sure to stay tuned as we finish our Hangar 9 Valiant.